Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed, and I'm here once again, as usual, with an amazing topic, eight steps of systematic review and meta-analysis. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed, and today we'll talk about the eight steps of systematic review and meta-analysis. So before we begin, we need to know what is a systematic review and what is a meta-analysis. Remember, as you know, research studies are studies of patients, right? If you are a medicine student, if you are a doctor, any medical student, you know that it's a study of patients, research of patients. If you are a non-medical student, then it's a, it's a research, uh, research of or study of participants. But here in systematic reviews, it's a study of papers. It's a study of research, study of previous research, study of previous pa papers. This is exactly what meta-analysis is, is, is as well. So study of papers, a paper of papers. This is what a systematic review is, and this is what meta-analysis is. So actually what happens is, when you combine previously published papers and you write one paper out of it, it is a systematic review or a traditional review or a meta-analysis. So these are called review articles. The broad category is review articles and review articles can be of various kinds like traditional review, scoping review, systematic review and meta-analysis. And here we are talking about, in this video, we're talking about meta-analysis and systematic review. We'll talk about traditional review and scoping review in some other video. But today, just stick with systematic review and meta-analysis. So how do we do it? What are systematic reviews and meta-analysis? As we know, they are combination of previously published papers. So yes, you combine so many papers together, previously published papers, and you write one article out of it. That is a review article. But a systematic review is where you combine previously published and unpublished papers and you write one article out of it. And same is meta-analysis. Then what is the difference? A little difference is that systematic reviews, they later become meta-analysis. Yes, systematic reviews can become meta-analysis. So all meta-analyses are actually systematic reviews initially, but not all systematic reviews can become meta-analysis. So this is a rule you need to remember. Now, how do we write them? We'll talk about these steps. Remember, first of all, that why do we call them systematic reviews? Systematic reviews are known systematic reviews because you create a system. We are creating a system in systematic reviews. That's why they are known as systematic reviews. So the system, why do we need to create a system? We need to create a system so that other people can repeat our methodology and get the exact same results. If they repeat it, they should get the exact same results. If, if other people repeat it and they don't get the exact same results, then it is not a systematic review. It is just a traditional review, a uh, literature review. But the rule of systematic review is that when anyone else repeats your methodology, they should get the exact same results. Same for meta-analysis. Remember the slight difference between meta-analysis and systematic review is systematic reviews become meta-analysis when robust statistics is involved. And of course, a little bit difference in the types of studies that you include. In systematic reviews, you include you can include different kinds of studies. You can include studies with, with different outcomes. We call them heterogeneous studies. But in meta-analysis, you include homogeneous studies. That means patient intervention outcomes, they will be similar. We'll talk about this in detail in some other video. But right now, we will stick with the eight steps of systematic reviews. And they are the same steps for meta-analysis as well. So let's begin. So what is the first step? The first step of writing a systematic review or meta-analysis is to come up with your research question. Yes, your research question. So what is a research question? Your research question is the main question that you are looking to answer. Now, how do you decide your research question? Remember the PICO format, P-I-C-O, P for patient or population or problem. I for intervention. C for 
control group or comparison and O4 outcome. So these are the components of a PICO question. So when you have a PICO question, you are all set to start your systematic review or meta-analysis. So the first thing first is to decide your PICO question. Now let's say you have decided your PICO question. Let's say patients with Alzheimer's disease who are taking insulin versus control groups who are not taking, who are taking pl placebo, they develop XYZ disease outcome. So let's say this is your research question. So now this will become a systematic review and it can also become meta-analysis. If you have homogeneous studies, it will become a meta-analysis. If they are heterogeneous studies, it will remain a systematic review. Now, what is the next step? Step number two. Step number two is the inclusion exclusion criteria. Yes, you have to come up with a wonderful eligibility criteria, inclusion exclusion criteria for your paper, for your topic, for your systematic review or meta-analysis. Now, why do you need inclusion exclusion criteria? You need it to make research easy for you so that you can get feasible number of papers that are easy to search. If you don't set up an inclusion exclusion criteria, you will get humongous amount of papers and it will be very difficult for you to write a paper. That's why we need inclusion exclusion criteria. Now, how do you decide inclusion exclusion criteria? With your research question. Remember, you keep your research question in your mind all the time. It will help you decide your inclusion exclusion criteria. And also you can get ideas from other people's papers, how they have come up with inclusion exclusion criteria. It will help you tremendously. Now, step number three is the data search. Yes, now the search begins. Now, remember, you have to do two kinds of data collection. What are those? Number one is the published papers, and number two is the unpublished papers. Yes, you need to include both. So published papers, where do you find published papers? On electronic databases. If you are a medical student or healthcare student, start with PubMed, Medline. They are almost the same because PubMed is an interface to Medline. Then you go to PubMed Central. Then you go to Web of Science, Google Scholar. This is the last one I would say, Google Scholar. Or, and then what, what else you can use? Science Direct, you can use Cochrane Library, you can use PsycInfo, you can use Scopus. There are so many databases you can choose. And let's say you come up with five big names of databases to search. And if you're a medical student, you can, you can now start data search. And this, this will include your, this will include your papers that you have included, uh, you have selected, published papers. But now, unpublished papers, you collect the gray literature. Gray literature means unpublished papers. These are theses, dissertations, conference papers, conference proceedings. Those are the unpublished sources. So yes, you can include you can include some gray literature. It's they are easily available online. Just find, just Google how to find gray literature. There are websites like clinicaltrial.gov or similar websites you can find so many unpublished papers. So you have a list of published papers, unpublished papers, and remember while using PubMed, you use mass strategy and regular keywords. We'll talk about that in some other video later. Now this completes your step three. Now what is the next step? Step four. Step four is to remove the duplicates. Remember when you included different databases, it's quite natural that you will repeat the same results. You are getting the same papers. PubMed has same papers as PubMed Central, many of them. Google Scholar will have many of the same papers that you found on PubMed. Similarly, on Web of Science, you will find many papers that were, that were on PubMed as well. So now you have a total number of papers that is actually humongous. And there are repetitions, so they are duplicates. So you must remove duplicates. Remember, duplicate removal can be done by reference manager softwares like EndNote, Mendeley, you can use them or you can manually remove them. And that manual actually is a misnomer, to be very honest. To be very honest, it's a misnomer because manual removal is also through a software, Microsoft Excel. You can remove it through Excel. You can learn it and you can do it either way. And keep watching and learning. And I will come up with these topics as well and you will learn that. But for now, just stick with it that you need to remove the duplicates as the next step. Once you remove duplicates, now the next step is screening. Step number five is the screening. But screening of what? Whatever total number of papers were left. Now you will 
actually do the screening of titles and abstracts with another author. You need two people for that. So you need two people, first and second author, and you will do the you will do the thing that is known as screening by looking at the titles and abstracts. Two people will look at it and you come up with a final number that, okay, after screening, we found these many papers relevant. Now jump to the next step, the step number six, and that is screening of full text. So whatever articles were left, now you try to find full text of those articles, whatever you can find, and now you search and after looking at the full text articles, let's say you come up with a final number, let's say 100 papers. Now you say, okay, total number of papers, relevant papers after full text search are all now 100. Now the step number seven is quality appraisal. You check the quality of those papers. How do you do that? You apply the quality appraisal tools. There are so many tools. What do we mean by tools? There are checklists, quality appraisal checklists. You apply them, uh, apply them and you check the quality and you will be able to you will be able to select high quality papers. And let's say after applying quality appraisal tool, you have 50 papers left or 60 papers left. Now the next step is data extraction. You extract data and your systematic review and meta-analysis methodology is done. Now, after this is done, then you move to writing part if it's a systematic review, but if it's a meta-analysis, now you move to the statistical part of the um, of the effect size and all those things that we will discuss in another video. But for now, just remember these eight steps. They're quite common, very common uh, in both of them in systematic review and meta-analysis. So I'll repeat again, once again, the first step was research question. Second question was inclusion exclusion criteria. Third question was data search by electronic databases. The fourth step was you remove duplicates. The fifth step was screening of titles and abstracts. Sixth step was screening of the full text, the seventh step was quality appraisal, and the eighth step was data extraction. So once you are done with this, you are done, then you can begin writing your systematic review. And if it's a meta-analysis, you can move to the statistical direction. Stay tuned for the next video. Keep, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.